today is a good day. It's the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it as we await the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River Channel. And I just want to say, you know, I don't have time to give you guys a snack suggestion today. I just don't have the time. But if I did have the time, it would be cranberry juice and fortune cookies. But I don't have the time for that. I want to go right to some praise verses because today is a good day. You know, there aren't many times in the 26 months I've been doing this channel that I've really had good news to tell you beside telling you the gospel every day, which is the ultimate good news. But we have good news today. But let's go to scripture and read some praise verses. Okay, let's go to Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. Oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Praise God. Let's go to Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 63, verses 3 and 4. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Amen. Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. Beautiful. Let's go to Psalm 145, verse 3. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. I love that. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. Amen. Let's do two more. Psalm 105, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. And then Psalm 145, verse 1. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. You know, in the previous one I read, Psalm 105, verse 1, it says, Make known his deeds among the peoples. I'm going to tell you about a couple of his deeds. Um, it's an amazing day. This is a good day. Last weekend, I told you about Pete Garcia's little daughter named Ella. I told you she was nine. And come to find out, she's 11 years old. She got in a terrible car accident last weekend. Terrible car accident. I think she... She fractured her skull in four places, this little 11-year-old girl. And people from all over the world have been praying for her, and there have been, like, miracles. I mean, this little girl, you ready for this? It happened last weekend. I believe, I'm pretty sure, she went home yesterday. She got to go home. What a praise God moment. Keep praying for her, for healing, and pray for that family. But God has worked just amazing things the last week in this family's life and in that little girl's life. God is good. God is good. Yeah, so, you know, there aren't many days that I do this channel when we're talking news that I can just give good news. But not only the praises about Ella's condition, but also four hostages were rescued today in Israel. And I want to cover that a bit because it's pretty amazing it's a good day today. It's just we take a momentary <laughs> day of good news and just praise our God. This is from Israel Today. Joint IDF-ISA and Israel Police Statement. This morning, Saturday, in a joint IDF-ISA and Israel Police Yamam Complex Special Daytime Operation in Nusrat, four Israeli hostages were rescued. Noah Argamani, 25 years old, Almag Mir Jan, 21 years old, Audre, uh, Andre Kozlov, 27 years old, and Shlomi Ziv, or Ziv, 40 years old, were kidnapped by the Hamas terrorist organization from the Nova Music Festival on October 7th. The hostages were rescued by the IDF, ISA, and Yamam forces from two separate locations in the heart of Nasarat. They are in good medical condition and have been transferred to the Sheba Tel Hashomer Medical Center for further medical examinations. The security forces will continue to make every effort to bring the hostages home. 
There was a lot of video. I cried quite a few tears this morning. Um, just, it, it was amazing. The, the young, the young woman, Noah Argamani, um, there are very tragic pictures of her the day that the, you know, on October 7th happened. And, um, just to see her smiling with her dad this morning in a video, I was crying. You know, I'm a crier. It's his, it's her dad's birthday too today. She came home for his birthday. Just amazing. Just a day to celebrate. Um, this is from Israel Radar. IDF rescues four Israeli hostages from Gaza in special operation. Heavy strikes reported in central Gaza earlier. Another one. IDF spokesman said Israeli forces raided two homes in the heart of Gaza to rescue four hostages under fire. Hundreds of troops took part in the operation. One member of Yamam anti-terror unit was seriously wounded. There is an update. He has passed away since. So they lost somebody. So it's so hard on a day where all of Israel celebrating these four people coming home. Another family there is mourning the loss of their son. Um, from Israel today, sources in Gaza report around 100 terrorists were killed during and, and in the aftermath of this rescue operation. Um, from Israel Today, Channel 14. The operation was carefully planned for over a month. Many models and preparations were made before Prime Minister Netanyahu approved the final plan on Thursday night. The operation had to be postponed several times prior to that. This shows the complex nature of the war in Gaza, a small but very densely populated area. Yeah, they had to go into the middle of this very populated area. And I believe they snuck like a furniture truck in there and it was full of their forces. And uh, people thought it was like furniture for displaced Gazans or something. And, and it was quite a fight. It's, it's kind of miraculous that Israel just lost one guy. And it's one too many, but it's kind of miraculous. This is from Jerusalem Jane. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke with Argamani, the, the young girl who was freed today, following her rescue in a phone call released to the public. In the call, Argamani said, I haven't spoken Hebrew in a very long time after Netanyahu asked her how she was feeling. For one moment, we haven't given, he said, for one moment, we haven't given up on you. I don't know if you believed it, but we had the full belief, the Prime Minister told the former hostage. Netanyahu was later making his way to the medical center where the hostages were taken to visit with them. Uh, it was a very emotional phone call. I, I saw a video of that, and I think he had tears in his eyes. It was a, it's been quite a morning over there. Uh, Hamas is in a state of stress and released this statement. Our people will not surrender, and the resistance will continue to, to defend our rights against the enemy. The movement will not agree to any agreement that does not first and foremost achieve security for our people, the ones we shoot at. No, I'm sorry I added that, but they do. Um, Israel has failed militarily, politically, and morally. The world must act. Well, you have the world on your side, but you know what? The Most High God is not on your side. His hand is on that nation and on those people. This is from Amir Sarfati. He said, shock at the top leadership of Hamas. Hamas members in Qatar cut off communication. It is not clear who, but some senior in Hamas was eliminated. The big question now is what Hamas leader was eliminated in that operation? These hostages were held as human shield for those losers, Amir's words. Uh, again, he said again, the big riddle now is who among the top two Hamas leaders was killed? Was it Yahya Sinwar? Or was it Mohammed Dave? It was one or the other. It was either the number one or the number two. They think were, were eliminated today. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is going to hold a press conference tonight. And uh, this is from Amir. Before I hit record, he said, Unverified Arab reports say that Mohammed Dave was killed in the Israeli operation. He's the number two guy. Um, according to Arab sources, the IDF now have his body. And this is unverified, but the IDF spokesperson denied that such an event happened. So there's conflicting reports, but we will see. Uh, from Israel Today, Hamas is painting the operation in Nasserat as a massacre. 
and threatening to halt all hostage ceasefire negotiations as a result. In this way, Hamas will try to portray the rescue of hostages as an act of villainy on Israel's part. You know what? Release the hostages. You can solve it very easily. And many in the world will eagerly adopt this view. Yes. Two important things to remember. Number one, it wouldn't be necessary to carry out such operations if Israelis weren't being held hostage in Gaza. And number two, nearly all of those killed in Nusrat were terrorist forces opposing the Israeli rescuers. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Seeing those, there was a lot of pictures and videos of seeing the three men be reunited with their family and that young woman with her dad on his birthday and it was very emotional. You know, these are civilians that were held for eight long months. This is from Israel News. Prime Minister Netanyahu. The UN, this is talking about yesterday, the UN putting Israel on like basically on a terrorist list with ISIS and Al-Qaeda, you know. The UN put itself on the black list in history today when it joined the supporters of the Hamas murderers. The IDF is the most moral army in the world and no delusional decision by the UN will change that. And you know what? Many military leaders around the world agree. I tell you this every day because not everybody watches every day. And it's important to know that many military leaders around the world say our forces never treated civilians like Israel does. No, no, no. We've never been as careful as Israel has been to evacuate civilians, to drop flyers and pamphlets and say, get out. It's about to be a war zone. Here's the way to go. There's the safe zone. All right, we got some Houthi news. So grab a candy bar and here we go. This is from JNS. Houthis reportedly kidnap at least nine United Nations staff members in Yemen. They're probably your biggest fans. You probably shouldn't be kidnapping them, honestly. Houthi terrorists are reportedly holding at least nine Yemen-based employees of the United Nations under unclear circumstances, the Associated Press reported yesterday, last night. The Houthis face increasing financial pressure and airstrikes from a U.S.-led coalition, per the AP. Others working for aid groups are likely have been taken, so they grabbed some, like I said, grabbed the wrong people. You don't grab the UN. They're, they're on your side. You know, they're against Israel. What are you doing? This is from War News 24 7. Uh, generalized conflict with Hezbollah. Israel decided. 350,000 reservists in arms. And it says topic for days is the final Israel Hezbollah showdown. Netanyahu's green light. They're saying it may happen within days. Uh, according to Israeli media, the army has approved an additional recruitment of 50,000 military personnel who will be added to the 300,000 reservists called up so far. Uh, Herzi Alevi announced his readiness to act against Hezbollah on Lebanese soil. Pray for the people in that part of the world, all the people, because you know what? Most of the Lebanese aren't on board with Hezbollah. You know, if they could just snap their fingers and get rid of them, most of them would. And it's terrible that terrible things are going to happen to their country because they have not controlled Hezbollah over the years. War is ugly, man. It's ugly. What else? Again, from Insider Paper, Blinken to visit the Mideast next week to push a ceasefire plan. I don't know. Right now, he's not carrying much weight, especially when they're celebrating releasing these hostages. But U.S. Secretary of State... Antonio Blinken will visit the Middle East next week to push a plan for an Israel-Hamas ceasefire that aims to end the war, the State Department announced on Friday. Blinken, who will be paying his eighth visit to the region since the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel, will visit Israel and key U.S. Arab partners, Egypt, Jordan, and Qatar, from Monday through Wednesday, the State Department said. Oh, he'll, he'll have a lot to say, but they don't listen to him too much. They listen to him a little bit more than I would, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> anyway, this is incredible news, anyone who's been following the whole BRICS thing. But Vladimir Putin confirms that BRICS is developing its own independent payment system. BRICS is working on our own independent payment system, free from political pressure, abuse, and the United States. But he didn't say that. He said an external interference. But really, the new world order is forming right before our eyes. It does not include the United States as we 
slowly disappear from being, you know, a huge presence in this world like we always were. And it's not good for this. Also, I'm hearing that Saudi Arabia is going to start using a different currency, not the U.S. dollar, for oil. That's huge. That's huge. A retail bloodbath. This kind of shocked me. More than 2,600 store closings have been announced so far in 2024. Listen to this. It's remarkable. Retail stores are being shut down at a staggering rate all over the country. If we stay on the pace we are on, the total number of stores closed in 2024 will be nearly 40% higher than the stores closed in 2023. That's huge. This is what you call a crisis. Meanwhile, banks are shuttering hundreds of branches from coast to coast, and a restaurant apocalypse is sweeping across the nation. Yeah, it's it's crazy. You know, we have a local mall here. You go to it. I swear it's 80% empty. You know. What else? Let's go to earthquakes. 41 over 4.0 and 7 over 5.0 in the last 24 hours. Okay, here we go. We're going to have to go for a little stroll through Clown World. This is from Newsweek. A dad. <laughs> a dad enlists AI, artificial intelligence, to help deal with the daughter who only listens to her mommy. This is just, I read this and I was just like, <laughs> I pictured my dad hearing this. <laughs> you know, he's been gone since 2008. But if I told my dad, oh, this is what this guy did when his little girl doesn't listen to him. He only, she only listened to the mommy. A tech-savvy dad struggling with a young daughter who only listens to her mom around the house, he hit upon a unique solution. His name is Jay Way, a former professional basketball player turned tech entrepreneur, is the first to admit that his young daughter only listens to her mommy. That's especially true when it comes to seemingly simple tasks like putting on a jacket. Sometimes if I bribe her with the right object, I can get her to put on a jacket, Way told Newsweek. The objects can be as random as an empty carton of milk or a credit card, but otherwise it's very difficult. As someone who likes to always lean into artificial intelligence for ideas and solutions, Wei thought, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing about this. Wei thought little of turning to it for help in coaxing his young daughter to do what he wanted, realizing that his daughter was also susceptible to colorful online videos he used the InVideo AI app to clone his wife Sharon's voice. And he then wrote out a simple text prompt that was turned into a clip of her instructing their daughter to put on the coat. <laughs> so now this man's going to walk around with a phone in his hand. And when he wants his little daughter to do something, he's going to hit an app and play a sound. And the wife's going to say, do this, do that no mention of what that's going to do to the kid and how weird that is. But that's what we're living through while we live in these last days waiting for Jesus to come back. And you know what? He's coming soon. But we're walking through clown world while we wait. You know, Got to make it entertaining. Let's go to a testimony of the day. Karen, I was saved at 30 years old. I knew nothing about God. I didn't grow up in church. I did recreational drugs drinking on weekends, many other sins. I had people over the years invite me to their churches, but I had zero desire to go. Then I met a precious soccer mom who was different. She had a light about her. She walked in love. She had an actual relationship with Jesus. For a year, I asked her questions. She'd take me to the Bible. She'd explain a long, and long story short, we went to a Milan Lafavre. I can't say, I don't I think it's a singer. La Fever, La Favre, and Broken Heart concert. And he gave an altar call and I couldn't get there fast enough. I'm 65 years old now and he has never failed me. He loved me enough to die in my place. That's beautiful, Karen. Thank you for sharing that. Beautiful. Let's get to a few comments of the day, okay? Barbara, this is a perfectly good day for the rapture. I've been taking more pictures of the sky lately, and my goodness, the sky is indeed changing. Right now, the puffy white clouds look low enough to touch. Same here. I've always been a sky watcher, and I don't think I'm imagining all the changes. God bless you, Tom, and the Watching River family. I agree. 
I'm also, I've always been a sky watcher. And I, you know, I'm continual. It's amazing I don't get car accidents because sometimes I'm, you know, looking too much up at the sky. But yeah, the clouds, they're different. They're different. The sun is way, way, way brighter than it used to be. We used to be able to look at it for a couple seconds or a second, you know, now, quarter of a second, your eyes are burning, you know. Mark, or Coffee Hubby, have you ever noticed how reading the scriptures encourage you, no, encourages you no matter what is going on? Yeah. Sometimes I need a rebuke or I'm not sure whether to go left or right in a decision and God's word clears it up. I love his word and our Lord for providing this. Amen, Mark. I agree. Yeah. His word is amazing. We have to be in it in these last days. We have to be. Linda, let's have the imagination to anticipate the righteousness that will reign when King Jesus sits on his throne in Jerusalem. We who love the Lord will come back with him at the end of the tribulation, having spent the previous seven years in heaven celebrating the Lamb's marriage feast with him. You're giving me goosebumps. According to God's word, we will reign with King Jesus for a thousand years. Oh, beloved, just hang on for a little while longer. God bless you, Watchman family. Maranatha. It worked for me, Linda. Thank you. You reminded me of our not-too-distant future. Amazing. Spending seven years with Jesus, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then coming back here for a thousand years to, to rule and reign with him. Just so amazing. What a privilege. What an honor. What a Our God is amazing. Judy, the United Nations and the United States can do whatever... However, God is still, they can do whatever. However, God is still on the throne and Israel will continue to do what they must by the hand of God, all powerful. Amen, Judy, you're right. God's hand is on that nation and on those people. And if you don't believe me, just keep watching. Because some people really do believe that Israel's about to be just gone. Nope, never, never, never. Those of you who don't think it's the Israel of the Bible and don't think the Jews are the Jews of the Bible, you will find out. Hopefully you won't be left behind. But if you're left behind, you'll really find out. God's hand is on that nation. Our Tiff, I continue to be convinced that God is allowing these things to happen because he will have the last word. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. There is so much evil being wound around this situation, yet God will use it for his glory. Hopefully we will be on our knees praising God at the foot of his throne very soon. God bless all of you. He actually said, hopefully we will be on our knees praising Jesus at the foot of his throne very soon. God bless all of you. Thank you for being a blessing to me. Thank you. You blessed us. You know, we're in the very last days, and this world is getting crazy. It's getting crazy. I talked about, you know, Russia sending, you know, nuclear submarine and ships to Havana, Cuba, Cuba area. And, you know, people were pointing out in the comments, because the news story I read said that there were no nukes on board, and the people were going, yeah, right no nukes on board. I, I thought the same thing, but I didn't say it. But you know what? If you don't understand we're in the last days right now, I, I don't know how I can convince you. You know, I guess, like I've said before, if if you never go on the internet and you never watch the news and you just live your life, like especially like where I am right now, it's beautiful. It's calm. It's peaceful. There's food in the grocery stores. You can really just say, all right, everything's fine. Oh, the rapture's not for years. It could be for maybe another two or three hundred years but when you pay attention the slightest bit when you stay in the word of god and you pay attention to what's going on in the news you go okay we're in the season for sure israel became a nation in one day 76 years ago then you have to add seven years to that the seven year tribulation but it said that generation would not pass away so you add those years, and those people are getting old. We're going home soon. We're at the end of the 6,000 years. The timing of this whole thing couldn't be more perfect. He is coming soon. Am I going to give you a day or an hour? No. Am I going to guess a day or an hour? Nope. I'm not even going to guess a month. 
But I'll tell you one thing, we're seeing all the signs, they've all converged and we're waiting. But the greater question is, are, are you coming with us or are you gonna find yourself left behind? If you're one of those people that have never truly just belonged to the Lord, you kind of believe, you don't know what you believe, you don't, you know, you just, oh, I grew up in a Christian home, I got so sick of that, that I've just kind of, you know, I think I believe in him, but I don't know. I just don't put any time into that. Your time is running out, time is running short. It's very short and you need to understand what Jesus did for you and you need to put your trust and your belief in the power of his blood and in his finished work or you're going to find yourself left behind. And anyway, even besides finding yourself left behind, you're not promised today. You realize that. God's not promising any of us today. We could be taken home today. But will you understand the greatest miracle that ever happened that God sent his only, only begotten son, Jesus, to the world 2,000 years ago to take care of the sin problem. He was the remedy for sin. The, the blood that Jesus shed was so powerful that it can wash you white as snow. It'll remove every sin you've ever done or ever will do. It will remove them away from you as far as the east is from the west just having faith in that blood because the blood Jesus shed is powerful. And when you put your faith in the blood and you believe in his finished work of going to the cross and dying and shedding that blood and, and being placed in a tomb and three days later, he resurrected. He's the king of kings. He's the answer to sin. I try to make the gospel as simple as I can make it. So you can understand it. I try to make it as simple as I can make because it is pretty simple. That we're all in this dire position of being sinners. And we're all on our way to death. And I'm talking about not just dying here. I'm talking about death that leads to eternal separation from God, hell. And we're all born with this sin nature. We all have this sin problem. And, and when you sin, you earn death. But Jesus came. And instead of you dying, he died on that cross. And he paid for your sins so that you can have eternal life. And he paid for your sins with his blood. And if you, you hear this and, you're, and, and it sounds right to you, you run to Jesus and you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I don't want to be face to face with you on judgment day with sins that are still with me. Wash me white as snow. I have faith that your blood will do that. And I believe in your finished work on the cross. When you do that, you're saved, you're born again, you're sealed until the day of redemption. You won't miss the rapture. You'll be our brother and sister for eternity as we join together as a body of Christ and just worship our King forever and ever in the most beautiful place that we can't describe because we can't, we don't have the words, we don't have, we can't even have a glimpse of what it's like. But it's an incredible place and we'll be with him forever. Or you can say, all right, I've heard this whole thing and I just don't believe it. You know what? Honestly, I, I've kind of, I think I know what eternity is. And then you make up your, you make up something of what eternity is. And you think because you've made it up, it's real. Because that's kind of the way the world has turned. You know, my truth is truth. Eh, not necessarily. You know, my truth is I don't pay taxes. But you know what? Tax man comes knocking. <laughs> my truth doesn't matter when the tax man's at the door. You know, you can't just make up your own truth. But a lot of people do. Well, overall, I'm, a, I'm way more good than I am bad. So I think what's going to happen is Peter's going to be at the pearly gate. And he's going to go, whoa, you're, you were, you're good? You, you have some bad, but you're more good. Go on in. It's not the way it works. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. We're only saved by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus, that's how serious sin is. You need blood shed in order to forgive your sins. But this wasn't an animal's blood. This wasn't a lamb like the Old Testament when they would slaughter the lamb and sprinkle the blood and it would cover their sins for a year. No, Jesus did a once and for all payment. He's never going up on the cross. He came here the first time as a suffering servant, very humble. He's coming back in power. And those that belong to him are gonna be behind him when he comes back in power in around seven years. He paid for your sins with his blood 
Don't be the one who says, I don't want that. I don't need that because you're going to face Jesus on judgment day. And you're going to know I'm in the presence of God and my sins are with me because I rejected the payment. You're never going to even think this isn't fair on judgment day when you're being led off to eternal separation from God, hell. You're never going to think this is unfair because you're going to, you've heard this now and you're going to say, I heard the gospel. I heard the good news that my sins were paid for by the blood of the lamb. And I said, no, I don't have time for that. I don't want that. I'm more good than bad. Leave me alone. And now I'm kneeling before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's saying away from me. I never knew you. That's terrifying. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Just trust and believe in what Jesus did. Put your faith in that blood and in his finished work and have salvation. Today is the day of salvation, right? I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and you know what? Today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.